Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in to Search for the Perfect Ten. Today, we've got with us, um, very kindly, uh, Professor Robin Jones, uh, Professor of Sport and Social Theory at Cardiff Metropolitan University and also the Associate Dean of Research. So, high commendations indeed. So, thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Hi, Kelly. Um... Yes, after that, I suppose there's only failure to go now. <laughs> I've got to come down. We build you up to shoot you down. That's kind of how we do it. <laughs> it's the right okay. way. It's what we do. <laughs> so um, a brief um, just synopsis for people. And um, obviously, Cardiff Metropolitan University being long-standing and huge sports based and, and your uh, big influence of the coaching side of it there. And so for me, I, I came across you on the Walsh Cycling um, uh, development web um workshops that we've been doing and and the sure. the work you've been doing on on the self others location all that type of thing it's really resonated and especially with what i've been trying to find out and so uh, so so for the fact that you've given, given up some of your time to have a chat with me i'm very grateful and i'm sure everybody's gonna love it and uh, I learn a lot from it so but yeah so as we, we started talking previously to hit and record and you were saying that uh, the how coaching a lot was based on psychology and obviously being a sociologist background and, and where you see that difference. So please hit me, hit me. I'll, I'll interrupt you if it needs me. So please don't be offended. Yes. If making notes. Don't worry about it. I'm done. It's because I'm listening. Please do interrupt. Please do. <laughs> um, yes, it, it was, uh, yeah, it's rooted in experience really. Um, and coaching has always been like a social thing for me. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, naturally, um, it involves yeah, more than one individual. Although, of course, when you're alone and sort of thinking about your sessions, you know, you're still in this role. You know, you still occupy the role. Yeah, I'm a coach, but it's always been more of a social thing that it needs more than one individual. And so what you're trying to, to do here is to influence the actions of others. Uh, particularly in a, uh, with learning at the heart of that influence. And so you need more than one individual and you need something that you're working to, to, imp to improve kind of somebody else or, or kind of some others, really in order that they uh, you have more mastery like of their particular sport at the time to improve the performance. Uh, yeah, so really it's a social thing like it's anchored in, uh, uh, really in interaction and so like it's how can i influence others to maybe engage with my words or to adopt the game plan i think is the best thing to do because they have to adopt it i think we always have to remember that it's the athletes and not only at the center of it but it's their learning that's at the center of it yeah. and so this yeah. is where like i I differ you know, a little bit from this athlete centeredness. I don't agree with that. I more agree with athlete learning kind of centered. And so, and so our energy like is about their learning and development <laughs> and mastery. And so this means that it's a social thing and it uh, engages not only yourself, it's yourself and them, like, and it's yourself and them, like, and the environment, and all these things are interacting at once, and you're trying to control and influence and shape and scaffold in the best way that you can. I think, I think that's a great, um, and we've touched on on the on the workshops, and, and I think the athletes athlete centered seems to be more of a buzzword now about, and, and I don't think anybody in their right mind is going, no, we don't want everybody should be treated to human decency and respect and and valued and everything else, but if it's athlete centered, what's the purpose of a coach? So why would you need to be told what to do? Cause we need that kind of almost a hierarchy system to be able to give instruction and to follow a process because there's a bigger plan that, that should be adhered to, I'm guessing. Mm. I agree. I mean, we should always act, should always act with all the humility and responsibility that being in some kind of a hierarchical structure entails but you shouldn't kind of shy away kind of from that responsibility. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's right that we involve athletes and that we involve learners or others, you know, we ask them how they feel. <laughs> do you understand? Yes. What do you think? But the nature of that interaction is more about the affirmation of the individual. And maybe that you ask them like about something related into the sport and you use that information 
to help you make a decision about, okay, well, we're going to go here rather than here. Uh, but you should never kind of shy away from making that decision and having that responsibility. Yeah, I think yourself. Because largely, and maybe simplistic, you said that's your job as a coach. It is. It, you said it is. You are coaching. So in essence, you are leading it. You, you should have that experience, that knowledge, that deliverance to go, this is what I believe is the best course of practice for you to achieve these goals, rather than just being a, oh, what if I do this? Well, try it, but let's reflect on it and let's learn from it or, or let's, let's at least engage in it and i think that's, that's something is key especially in and when you see and from people i've spoken to communication now is just such a it's, it's, it's global simplicity like i can't get to you in cardiff metropolitan university so we hook up a zoom call so there's no reason not to communicate effectively with people anymore i think there's a we're now in an age where communication is more than ever but maybe we don't communicate enough because we can't i don't know mm. but that's you know it goes into this thing about you know, language is the you know is the greatest form of of uh, you know of influencing others and communicating, but it's not the only form. You know, like and we forget sometimes. You know that there's lots of other ways that we can send the messages, like and receive messages, and and uh, you know, you don't have to give the bigger you know Winston Churchill speech all the time because it doesn't work. Perhaps it works once. You know, once a season or, or something like that, you know, so you have to think about other ways. So it's more about kind of how you behave. And this is what we were exploring earlier with yourself, Kelly, on the course about, you know, who is the coach? And yes, what you coach is, is extremely important. And obviously kind of how you coach is extremely important, but also you know, who you are. Yeah. And the messages that you send kind of really can through your embodiment of the job. I mean, that's equally importance in my in my book yeah and i think and it's been an interesting one for me on 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 the workshop because obviously there's for me there's two sides to the same coin of one is a professional entity and one is also a commercial driven interest because they they, they, they go hand in hand so people and, and i'm firm believer in business people by people there's there's a lot of the same product there's a lot of the same um, coaching that type of thing so you form a relationship with that individual and i'm sure you've probably seen in different sports where some coaches might be saying one thing and people just aren't clicking with it or it's not resonating and it's not and then another coach might come along it's exactly the same thing but just in a different manner or in a different deliverance of it and people go oh yeah we'll do it and you're like oh, i've just been telling you that for <laughs> however many you went so i think you said so it's those non-verbal cues as well can be just as important Yes, and it's a difficult one to, to really, you know, to put your finger on it as well. You know, that we speak about, uh, you know, not just using things. The uh, toolbox analogy, I think, is wrong. It's too shallow. It's too superficial. You know, it's not as if, okay, well, I'll use this now and then I'll, rep I'll, I'll replace it and I'll use something else now and I'll replace it. I think it, it, you, know, you have to think about your interactions uh, you know, and the depth of them and to make sure that there's consistency you know, whilst having a degree of kind of flexibility as well. You know, so these are the sorts of things in debates that, uh, you know, that you have you know, with yourself like, and perhaps you know, it's with others as you, see, as you see the others' reactions and then interaction unfolds. But you know, there has to be more than just, okay, we'll do this and then we'll do that. Yeah. You almost have to live your theory, I think. But first of all, you know, you have to make your mind up largely as to what that kind of theory is and looks like. It's, uh, I'm smiling because it's just, there's so many bits going on where you experience that or things that you say and you go, yeah, there's sessions where you have to do this or you can have a session plan laid out and you go, I'm going to deliver this and on the day, people just aren't coming into it and you go, how do I change this now on the hop? What? Mm. resources can I draw from or experience to be able to go oh we'll change it to this let's just do this it's not a crowd pleaser as such but we know that it's going to positively influence or pick people up and be able to go right now we can try and I know now I can try and manipulate you into doing what I want you to do essentially because it's or what you need to do but you don't want to do and that and that's a key part of coaching I think is that influence in your what you need from somebody whilst convincing them that Yes, they want to do it and they need to do it without creating barriers as well. It's, 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 it's way more than people think, give it credit for, I think. Yes. 
coaching is very much a performance. And this is where your know, sociology is quite handy, like in many ways, because, you know, it goes into, you know, some micro performances about, you know, how can I influence someone? Well, I have to leave the image I want in their eyes. Okay, well, what's that? How do I do these things? You know, so when you're running a session, you think, oh, this isn't working how I planned it all. And there's no engagement. Uh, it's really good for you to kind of think about, you know, so what are they seeing and what do they want? want to see and therefore you you know you amend you know your actions and behaviors uh, you know, and sometimes i don't think there's anything wrong that you know in being reasonably hard you know it's within boundaries of course but to be reasonably hard about okay well this is what we agreed on so this is what we expect okay so this is why we're here okay let's go for it La you know, largely when you're doing that you you know i guess you reaffirm uh, that you're reaffirming authority because i uh, you know, you explain the expectations first time, I'm sure, you know, very well. So this is just like a reaffirmation, but it's part of the performance of authority that you know, sometimes it's needed. You know, hopefully it's, you know, it's not needed often, but we should, it's not as if we should kind of shy away. And the reason why we do these things, or we should, is to act in the best interest of the environment and the group. <laughs> it's not just... Uh, you know, like an ego trip for, you know, for ourselves, you know, as we're also thinking about the best interests of everybody there, like, and the hour or the hour and a half that you've got to spend, like, is it the best use of time? Yeah. It's interesting. And like I said, it's, it's that, I love the word, I love the word ego and, and of, of some of the best athletes and best business people and everyone I've spoken to. So many people kind of recognize and go, yeah, this isn't about me. It, it is that almost to be, the ability to step back, look at the bigger picture, and just see your part within it, rather than it being, this is this is me, therefore I am. It's a, a collective and a, a deliverance for the better good for everybody. Yes, yes, obviously, if riders do well, I as a coach benefit from it, and I understand that transaction. And then, but equally, the, the athletes, they should benefit from it. And, and whether they go on to represent Great Britain, or whether they get medals, or, or whatever they choose to do, everybody has that reciprocated beneficial element to it that, that in theory could just keep going outwards really and, and keep benefiting everybody yes and i think that's something that we need to keep in mind sometimes in the in the most difficult you know spells in the depth of winter when it's raining and and you're thinking oh my god this is cold i'm not sure if i want to do this <laughs> i do this for a living uh, but it's you know there was a the rewards are magnificent when your athletes are doing well and you get uh, you know you get that nice warm feeling and the buzz and you know that somewhere that you've you played a role in this you know and this is 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 almost kind of self-sustaining isn't it it's going to through those uh your darker days but like an interesting aspect of it is that i also see it as exchange the coaching as exchange so you think what you want kind of from your athletes and you'll eventually end up with, with things like, okay, I want hard work. I want their efforts. Uh, I want them to listen to me. I want them to engage with my words, you know, whatever they may be. So he's a huge kind of his social gifts. Yeah. And yet we want these. So if we want them, what are we willing to give in order that we get them? Because life is, you know, all sorts of social exchanges going on here. <laughs> So it really makes you think and kind of bringing it back into the performance of the coach again. And this is not an insincere performance. It's not a dark and a Machiavellian thing. It's, it's just a social strategy, you know, that makes us work. You know, you're acting the interviewer at the moment. I'm acting the interviewee, you know, like, et cetera. You know, so we're acting at these roles. So if I want those things kind of from my athletes, what have I got to give to get those huge, big social gifts of respect and, and so it really makes you think about, uh, right, okay, I need to bring my A game. And that equates to this, this, and this. That virtually every session that you go into. It's true. And like I said, I, I like when we dug into the social exchange side of it. And there's that, and there's that multiple layer, multiple facets of it. And, 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 and understanding that, yes, we, we play a part. Is, as, as, as we mentioned, I can't coach an under six, a, a youth group on the velodrome, same as I could coach one of my elite athletes. Because if I tell them, Get on the I can't say that to the other group because mm. they won't respond the same way. And it won't yep. be the same action. So almost 
whilst I hate it, trying to please everyone, you have to play a part for every almost audience that you have to be able to tap into that level, to be enough that maybe you're just a bit of an antagonist, almost, can, I think that is, is being an antagonist is a positive thing, I think, and I've always seen it as that. You kind of need to poke people sometimes to, to make them a bit uncomfortable, because I think we do excel when we're uncomfortable, because it makes us challenge our beliefs and, our, and what we want. And go, or, or, but as long as on the end of it, I guess, there's a positive outcome, I think, don't we need to antagonize people and then knock them down? That's not it. It, it is always that sure. leaving with a positive. So I think it's that... It, it, it is a difficult one. And I know I've come back from sessions where I've gone, oh, I kind of misjudged that one. I'm, oh, I'm a little bit, ooh, oopsie. And you, and you learn from it. And I think a mistake as long as we learn from it is okay. So, but yeah, that, 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 the social exchange thing, and, and when we've touched on it, especially on those Tuesdays, I found it really fascinating because I've never thought of it that way on a, as an exchange or a transactional basis, for, aside from a monetary process, obviously you pay your money, you get your delivery from a, I give you this, therefore, what do you give me back? Or what am I prepared to sacrifice for you to have this? And, and it's, it's an interest, and, and it can go way down the line, I'm sure. But um, so for you, mm. for you as a coach, what, what, what do you see is, is the big transaction of what you give to get back? Uh, it's, <laughs> these things, uh, a social idea is a good to think with. <laughs> You know, it's not to apply without consideration, I think, which is very important, which is why that we work with yourselves and, you know, the coaches, you know, about how you think about things. It's not that you understand the theory, it's how can you apply it in a sensitive and considered, like an insightful way. So it's your thinking, you know, that's at the heart of it, you know, that you're asking about exchange, um, and I've forgotten what exactly what the question was actually, <laughs> but you're asking about exchange or yeah. you know, there's one thing I wanted to say what you started with yeah, there yeah. that was uh, that if you have a group of six year olds and if you have an international athlete and you're not going to behave the same way, of course, uh, the environment is different. The, the objectives are different. And so, although I think it's also vital that is a flexibility it does not mean a degree of inconsistency <laughs> and so even though that we occupy lots of roles in life let's say you have your son you're a father you're a i don't know like an athlete you're a lecturer you're this okay you're not unrecognizable it's still you that within that we can recognize in those roles although certainly that you don't behave the same way you definitely do not uh, but you're still recognizable. Yeah. And so there's a consistency kind of throughout, but there's also, there's also this kind of flexibility throughout. And so you live your principles. And so you have to decide somehow about, okay, well, this is what I believe is the right way to coach largely, not exclusively <laughs> and not always, yeah. but largely like I, you know, I focus on A and B and, yeah, and C because I think that they're vital. And so you know, really these things perhaps are evident in virtually every environment that, you know, that I would see you working in. So yeah, I just wanted to emphasize that. No, I think, I think that's great. And I think I, when I reflected on it before, I think a good way to kind of look at it is like an orange. You can be orange squash, you can be orange juice, you can be an orange and vodka. You, there's three different drinks, but there's still an orange in there. So you, at the glance, you could go, oh, that's an orange. Yes. And I think yes. from a coaching point, there, there's that, Oh, that's still kind of coaching. Oh, that's still so and so, and that. Oh, that's their yeah. style. That that's how they operate. Like I said, I can't f and Jeff amongst youngsters, but then if there's an athlete who's not performing, yes, I would. But they would still be that same recourse of action through a consistent level. And I guess, and I think for me, a key thing that I've found with athletes I've spoken to and, and other coaches and stuff is that consistency. Is that consistency is key across the board of just being neither too up nor too down but just that consistent level so people know what to expect because nobody wants a coach that's going to be raw hairdressery or that type of thing unless it's provoked or unnecessary i guess you kind of want to know what you're going to get yes and this is the difficult thing as well i think you know you're absolutely right with that although you, you know for every session virtually you, you have to bring something new like otherwise <laughs> athletes keep asking okay oh, we've had this before <laughs> yeah watch new tonight kylie you know <laughs> And, and so there has to be kind of something that's a touch of kind of value added 
you know, that they perhaps haven't seen before, they have perhaps haven't recognized before. Again, it's not unrecognizable because you're going in, in you know, small steps-ish. You know, you decide on, the, you know, like on the speed of development, of course, as a coach. But uh, yeah, you have to be the same, but you have to be different. You have to be consistent, yet you have to be flexible. <laughs> <laughs> so these things, uh, they're not opposites when it comes to our complex job. So, yeah. So basically, you've got to be this, but you can't be that. It is, it is that juggling element to it. And I think for yeah. me, and, and I'm mindful of, I know that it's, if, I won't go on, onto a rant, but there's, I think in every walk of life, there's, there's, there's levels of professionalism in, in all disciplines. So you see good, good examples of this, good, bad examples of that. And I think it's that this is where I'm going is to try and see what is a best example of coaching practice and how, how should it look? I don't believe for one minute we can go, this is how it will be because this is where it goes. And I know personal experience, I can't work, I wouldn't want to work for an NGB because I can't fall into their constraints without staying true to myself because I would be conscious of so many elements of, I can't say that, I can't do that. Whereas if I'm me, I can just do what I want to and, 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 and I will suffer the repercussions of it from my own, staying professional and everything else. But if, 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 if I was going to get in trouble by telling somebody they were shit, I, 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 I'm like, oh, well, then that's not for me. Uh, so I kind of understand myself that I wouldn't be able to not be true to myself, but to deliver that authentic self on, on that level. Yes, it's, uh, you know, we had a debate, I think, at the last workshop, uh, um, I'm currently, uh, uh, yeah, about this authentic self. Again, this is where kind of sociology rescues me, like in lots of ways, because I don't believe in, you know, like in an authentic self. Um, you know, as I discussed, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, that I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband, I'm a this, I'm a that. So and there are many selves that go into making me exactly the same as everybody else. And I'm made as a consequence, largely of my experiences. Uh, because if I ask you, you know, are you the same individual that you were eight years ago, kind of 16 years ago, 30 years ago? You'd say no. I'm assuming you'd say no. Uh, no. <laughs> so as a result of your experiences, yeah, you've altered and that you're in a state of evolution. And so we are kind of who we are really from the outside in rather than from the inside out. It's our experiences that can shape us like in scaffolders and mold us to people that we are. And so there's no one self, you know, really is the message lurking inside of me. You know, there are many selves that have been formed over the years as a consequence of my experience. Now you can see some strands that go all the way through, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were to go back and, you know, could see, uh, you know, it's a 15 year old Robin, maybe you'll see somebody, do, but yeah, I like to think that I would be recognizable to a certain degree, although I, I, I certainly hope to have, to have evolved considerably since I was 15. <laughs> he says, yeah, so there is no one self, you know, so when we talk about, well, you have to be honest with your athletes or they'll see right through you and th uh, these kind of you know, chat show logics, you have to throw away lines. I think we have to think about the job just a little bit more than that. I think which enables you to be who you want to be as well, because you can change again, not radically from night and day, but you can, and you should evolve. And this is what learning is. If we want the athletes you know, to actually evolve and say, you know, you can change, you can be better. Then surely the same thing applies to coaches. I think, I think that's exactly nailed it. I think that is exactly it is that as athletes are learning, coaches should be learning and we should be learning with our athletes and from our athletes and, and it's that somebody that can question you and go well what is this or, or why am i doing this or what can we benefit from this if you don't know then, then it's time to get on bloody google and get finding in there you know it, it, there's enough research to be able to go grow a bit and grow with it and and sometimes acknowledge that a, an attack on you almost can be beneficial and to be going push you out of that boundary tough to take though sometimes you know oh, yeah. because you know, the job is kind of full of insecurities isn't it it's it's uh, you, you don't know how well a session is going to go you know, you may have planned every second of every minute of the hour and a half or the three hours and you 
and it's not going to go to plan. That's the one thing that you're sure of. So you've got all this insecurity that's going on. And it's, you know, it's sometimes hard when can somebody says, uh, I challenge you over this and I challenge you over that <laughs> and I challenge you over the other. Uh, but you know, you're right, you know, it's this insecurity. That, like, if you look at the insecurity as a way of learning, yeah, that's why your small failures, as we say, like uh, uh, windows of learning, you know, it's not massive failures and you know, it's massive kind of challenges because they're just kind of sapping. You have to justify your practice all the time to people. It's, it's just too hard. But, you know, kind of small ones and it makes you think about your evolution and you're going in the right way. I mean, they can be really helpful. I, I think they are. And I think and that's, I think you say it's interesting you touch on insecurities because, because as a coach and, and in sport, we know that I'm, I'm a firm believer on saying to people is like, look, you need to be mentally tough if you want to compete because you will be judged. The minute you go out, you're being judged. You, you're being judged on your performance. So there's a time associated to it and there's a first to last place. Whether you're first or you're last, if you can accept your position within that, then okay. So you're already a little bit mentally tougher going into it than you would be of, I don't want to be this, that, and the other. I, I've often raced and gone, as long as I'm last but one, I'm all right. I just don't want to be last. <laughs> and kind of go in with that almost justification to go, whew, I'm all right. So there is that understanding that there is a judgment associated to it and, and we will all be judged. And I would be judged as a coach if my rider finished first or last, whether that's on a good or a bad, Always. should that matter to me? Of, of course it does on a level. Should it matter to me enough that it rocks me? Not really, because I think there's a, an understanding that it's just sport right? and I think, or it's, it's important for obviously reasons, but there's also that element to go, come on, it's, it's not the end of the world. We, we, can, we can learn or we can move forward or we can rectify it or, well, you can celebrate or we can reflect. There's, there's plenty of options from everything. Mm. I mean, some, yeah, some of the things that you touch on there so resonate actually, Kylie, because here for some of us, you know, like yourself, actually, it's work. Yeah, it's a work environment. And you're absolutely right. You know, it's one of the things you know, that makes our job you know, unique, I think, is the level, uh, the level of ambiguity or the level of uncertainty that's actually associated with it. Because every session you run, you know that your work is up for social evaluation. Like it's the, you know, like it's the athletes, like it's anybody watching it. Maybe, you know, it's mums and dads, like, you know, like it may be, yeah. Uh, you know, it's anyone. You know, like it's the athletes themselves. You know, they're always making an evaluation of you and your work. Of course, in the event itself, it's you know, like a big cycling event or in a, <laughs> games on Saturdays. It's your work that's up kind of for evaluation because, you know, the other side is also making evaluation of your work, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, whoever's watching. And so this adds into like a degree a degree of uncertainty, like a degree of ambiguity, degree of insecurity about it, because after the event, largely that we feel the joy that we've won, a disappointment that we haven't, but to a degree, especially if we won, a sense of relief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's joy initially, but there's a great sense of relief that, oh, I'm, I'm you know, I'm so glad they did well, yeah. you know, but you know, yeah. Of course, you're glad for them, but you're glad for yourself. Of course. <laughs> yeah, because it's over. <laughs> you know, there's some really interesting work that says that this is the sweet anxiety of uncertainty. Sweet. Yeah, yeah this like is that. the addiction <laughs> for us in a way. Yeah, it's the adrenaline drip that we, we, yeah, we work very, very hard at and we see if we can do everything. And, you know, as much as we're able to, to control this very insecure environment and, you know, an event. And of course, when they do well, it's such a buzz, you know, that this kind of, you know, kind of sustains us kind of through the, in the dark winter months when things aren't going well and they're losing and you're thinking, what am I doing? And <laughs> am I doing the right things? But then you get a win again. And this is, uh, we're looking into this thing as, uh, uh, I'm coaching not as an addiction, but as a compulsion it's hard to stop it. 
Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. I would say there, there is a compulsive element to it, and then success breeds success. And then once you've got that, there is a, there is a high from it. There definitely is. And, and whether that's yes. just seeing somebody new learning the track or they go away happy, seeing other people yes. happy, it makes you happy. You you mirror each other, and it, it becomes that. It feels it's good. addictive it feels, in a way. Yeah, it? well, it's, it's very it's addictive. addictive. It's very addictive, and it's um. Yeah, it's so easy to understand how elite athletes, when they go from winning and then they retire, to see where there's that huge void because there is that rush of adrenaline and that, and that appreciation and recognition. It's all of a sudden, who am I? What am I doing? And um, But look, we'll go into that on a different one, only because I've realised the time and we planned a short call and I'd Sorry. way rather do lots of little calls with you because I know you're a busy man and um, there is way more we can get into if, uh, if you're cool. I warned you that you'd have to interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, you gave me the half an hour window, so I'm running on that. Otherwise, I will Sorry. talk for two hours solid and we will bore everyone's ass off. So <laughs> we'll go down that route. So I will say thank you very much for that. This is episode, see, episode one with uh, Robin Jones. So we will have a couple more, I think, because there's a lot more that we can get into on a, on a lot deeper level as well, if that's okay with you. So I'll, yeah, hold, you to this on, uh, I'll hold you to this on, on, a, on a, an approvable format so we can <laughs> repeat it. But, uh, so for now, thank you very much. And I will leave you to your lovely day. And I will, um, again, thank you very much. I will see you very, very soon.